Howdy. Welcome to the graveyard of failed LEGO ideas. Over the years, many people have given LEGO fully built set ideas, and many of them LEGO has made into official sets. However, LEGO has considered some sets proposed too inappropriate to make. They might be considered unsuitable for the younger LEGO audience. Or maybe LEGO simply doesn't want their name attached to the brand in question. So we're going to talk about them today. Let's check out the 10 rejected LEGO sets. And just a heads up, LEGO doesn't always give a full reason why these sets were rejected. So if there is no official reason, I'll do my best to speculate based on my research. But if you know better on a set, feel free to correct me in the comments. And obviously, this isn't a completely exhaustive list. But I've tried to focus on the sets that are most relevant to us and not just random buildings. Anyway, on to the countdown. Psych number 11. <laughs> The Among Us LEGO set. Huh. LEGO rejected Among Us? Really? It's like the most popular game in the world. This set easily got its 10,000 supporters. I suspect if it could have gotten 100,000, it probably would have. If you're somehow not familiar with this game, you might have seen it popping up in like every Twitch stream on the planet. Among Us is basically an online party game that makes for great streaming material or just a good old fun time with friends. And well, with everything going on, I'm always for finding a good time with friends. I was particularly curious of why they rejected Among Us, because it's really hard to overstate how ridiculously huge this game is. In terms of monthly sales, this is the most popular game ever. It's sold over 125 million copies so far, and that's only accounting for PC and mobile. Anyway, the build itself consists of six crew members, a ghost, and the basic rooms. Including the reactor, the engine room, and the lobby room. Nice. This one seems like an open shut case. It's like giving LEGO a license to print money. So my best guess is maybe there was a licensing issue. I just can't see any other reason LEGO would turn their head when this much money is being shoved in their face. Maybe gaming company Inner Sloth just wanted too much of a cut for LEGO to license this. I couldn't find any clear-cut reasons, so my best bet is licensing. And holy bejeebas, look how many comments this thing got. 2,055 comments. This has got to be among the most popular LEGO ideas in history. Number 10. LEGO Futurama, the Planet Express Headquarters. Dang, this is a beautiful recreation. They even made minifigures of the Planet Express crew. Look how detailed the set is too. When I see this set, I feel like I'm stepping into an episode of the show. The colors feel perfectly suited to LEGO 2. But up till now, LEGO has always rejected Futurama sets. Although there's no official reason Futurama's rejected, I do have a speculation. I remember in controversial LEGO sets, we found out that LEGO received some controversy for creating Simpsons LEGO. So maybe it's a similar case here. Maybe LEGO Futurama is simply not worth the controversy. I think there's definitely an argument to be made that Futurama tends to aim for an older audience than The Simpsons. All of Futurama's main characters are adults. We actually rarely see kids. And they can certainly guarantee their money will be returned with The Simpsons because, well, it's The Simpsons. And for the ninth rejected set, Lego Shaun of the Dead. Hey cool, I love this movie. And the set is a surprisingly accurate Lego version of the original movie. The set obviously recreates the characters, some of the zombies, and of course the bar that Shaun loves, the Winchester. Let's wait for all of this to blow over. For this one, we actually have the reason Lego rejected the set. And frankly, it's pretty clear cut anyway. In case you don't know, Shaun of the Dead is a 2004 zombie comedy horror. An R-rated zombie comedy horror. It includes scenes of extreme violence and decapitation. So, you know, it, it's not exactly child-friendly LEGO material. LEGO Technic gives you a new challenge. 4x4 four four drawing. Of course, in reality, actual LEGO characters get decapitated all the time. Their head screws off. It's a common occurrence for LEGO characters to break apart in many LEGO games and shows. Some people debated LEGO's decision in the comments posing ideas like, why doesn't LEGO just make it for an 18 plus audience? There's plenty of 16 plus sets out there, why not make an 18 plus set? There are a lot of LEGO adult fans out there, including myself. 
Personally, I think the answer to this question would be that even though some sets are specifically designed for 16 plus audiences, they're never based off material that would be outright traumatic to a very young audience. They're generally given their older guidelines if they're considered too complex for a younger audience. Like, I can't think of any LEGO sets that use ultra-violent horror. If you know of any, feel free to let me know in the comments, because I'd be really curious. I mean, what would LEGO gore even look like? Wait, that? Well, I guess that's kind of scary in a Lego-y way. Number eight. Lego Firefly Serenity. If you haven't heard of this show and movie, well, that's actually kind of impressive. This show is the definition of having a cult following, myself included. It was a powerful space western made by Joss Whedon, with so much character in it. You might have heard of his work from a long-forgotten, obscure movie known as Avengers. It's a real rare find. Anyway, jokes aside, this series was cancelled a little too early for many people's taste. It was mainly cancelled because of bad time slots, and of course, because Fox is made up of idiots. Anyway, that aside, LEGO was nice and clear as to why this set was rejected. The subject matter. The subject matter being Firefly was filled with violence, dark themes, and sexual references. In other words, it was awesome, but not really suitable for little people's hands. Even if they're just looking over their nerdy dad's shoulder at the set. There's no doubt, though, the Firefly spaceship known as Serenity would have been a beautiful LEGO model. I mean, just look at this ship. It's stunning and looks like it was practically made to be a LEGO model. It don't look like much. Oh, well, she'll fool ya. But disappointed as I was, I do understand LEGO's reasoning behind rejecting Firefly. And for number seven, the International Space Station. This one's a bit of a weasel call because it was both rejected and accepted. I imagine the world's space agencies would be delighted to see young minds taking an interest in the space station. And there's definitely plenty of adult space fans out there who would definitely enjoy a LEGO space station. But for the longest time, the station remained a rejected LEGO idea. But LEGO's reason for rejecting it did make a lot of sense. The structural integrity was an issue. You see, the ISS was built you know, in space. And gravity is not really an issue in space, so if they make it extra flimsy, it doesn't really matter. But with the LEGO ISS, I believe we're mostly building it here on Earth, where gravity is definitely an issue. But in the recent 10-year anniversary of LEGO ideas, they chose the most popular rejected LEGO idea for a second consideration. And the most popular LEGO idea they could reconsider it was the ISS. So they brought in LEGO master and designer, Corvin Stitchett. Work on how we can maintain the rotating structure and keep it so it stays straight as if it was in zero gravity. The original designer Sam and Corvin figured out a way to stop this space station from being annihilated by gravity. And it's wonderful news because this station is not just an achievement for any country, but humanity as a whole. It's kind of like sticking out a big middle finger to the infinite cosmos and saying, screw you infinity, we're not going without a fight. Anyway, my only complaint with this set is despite it being approved, it's really hard to find. Pretty much everywhere I looked had zero stock of it. Even the official LEGO website labels it as hard to find. But it's technically approved now and technically possible to get. So hooray for the International Space Station. Number six, small yellow. Hey boo, check this out. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's so raw. This is a Lego sculpture known as yellow. Really, that's a name? Okay, okay. Points to the creator Nathan Sawaya for keeping his title simple. The sculpture itself though, I think it's anything but simple. This is actually one of my favorite pieces of artwork. But I'm not the only fan. In fact, the original sculpture had a massive fan in Bill Clinton. Mr. Clinton later went on to premiere the sculpture in his presidential library. The small buildable set, Small Yellow, has actually been proposed to LEGO twice now. But for some reason, it's been continually rejected. Once again, I couldn't find LEGO giving any official reason. Maybe the artist Nathan is opposed to seeing his artwork mass-produced? No, wait, scratch that. It appears this idea was literally proposed by the man himself. 
so why wouldn't LEGO want to produce this? My best guess, we're once again looking at issues with structural integrity. As beautiful as this artwork is, there's no exact instruction manual into parts of the small yellow. And I get that, because it's art. It doesn't have an instruction manual. That's part of what makes it beautiful. What would the manual say? Spill a bunch of yellow blocks out of his chest to look like his LEGO guts are falling out? But I really hope that someday they do find a way to reproduce this. Because yellow remains one of my favorite pieces of art of all time. And for number five, Lego Surf and Rescue. Huh, this one actually comes from my home country, Australia. And frankly, there is a beautiful incentive behind this one. It was originally created by Damien and his nine-year-old son. Their goal of this set was to increase sun safety awareness. Because here in Australia, we're known as the skin cancer capital of the world for a reason. Like, seriously, we're number one in the world for global cancer rates. That's not a good achievement. And most of those cancers are skin cancers. To this day, it remains downright shocking to me that more people don't wear hats in my country. Damien McRae said that all children should understand the importance of sun protection. He believed LEGO had the chance to be a powerful messenger in this. And it's worth mentioning, the home of LEGO, Denmark, is number four in the world on skin cancer rates. So surely they also have a personal investment in this message as well as Australia. I was trying to figure out why this was rejected though, as it comfortably got its 10,000 votes on the LEGO Ideas website. And while researching, I noticed that my friend Just Too Good had reviewed an official Surfer Rescue set. And the first thing I noticed is that the costumes were a bit more modest than the Australian versions. I wonder if that's part of the reason they passed on this one. Is there just a bit too much bare skin shown on this Lego set? Anyway, I think it's important to mention that the author, Damien, had stage four melanoma skin cancer. He mentioned in the last post I could find of him that the doctors say the outlook is grim. To Damien's family, my deepest respects go to you and Damien for helping raise skin cancer awareness. I hope my video might at least help raise a little more awareness of skin cancer and this beautiful Lego set. That takes a lot of time out of your life when you could be dedicating to living your life, spending your time with your family. And for number four, the Fall Guys Lego set. While Fall Guys isn't as big as Among Us, well, pretty much nothing in gaming is. In case you don't know, Fall Guys is a massively multiplayer party game. You race to go through an obstacle course, often in a very humorous fashion. And frankly, this set looks really colorful and vibrant. It really stands out. It feels like a match made in heaven, but strangely, Lego rejected Fall Guys. The set was called the Ultimate Knockout Course. It seemed to be a short, simple obstacle race course, similar to the game would have. For this set, I do have a reasonable theory as to why it was rejected. You see, in August 2020, Fall Guys peaked in popularity, with over 150,000 concurrent players on Steam. However, as of 2021, it averages six to 10,000 concurrent players. With such a sharp drop in interest, LEGO probably thinks Fall Guys is going to get less popular rather than more. And the six to 10,000 player base probably isn't quite enough to justify a full LEGO set. That being said, this is still obviously a huge amount of players and a very active community. And in my free time, I personally still really enjoy a few Fall Guys games. And the third rejected LEGO set is LEGO Zelda. I know, right? Why would they possibly pass up Zelda? It's a massively well-known gaming franchise that has been going strongly for 35 years now. I don't think there's many gaming companies in history that could say they were going strongly for 35 years. And I imagine Nintendo would be game for it. I mean, we've got Lego Mario. Over the years, many users have been so enamored with the Lego Zelda idea that they've already endeavored to make their own versions. So why not make an official one? Well, interestingly, I could actually find a reason this time. When this set was proposed, as you can imagine, it easily got its 10,000 supporters. But in the end, LEGO said they rejected the idea not because of the content itself, but apparently because the molds were too complex. And looking at all these endlessly complex trinkets Link carries, well, I can kind of get it. This might be one of the few cases where Link having too many accessories was actually a disadvantage to his survival. But surely this can't be the only reason. Why not just give him the Master Sword then? It's quite clear that many fans would just be happy to have a Lego set at all. Yeah. It really puzzles me that in the 35 years Zelda has been around, 
it has never had an approved LEGO set. If you have any thoughts why this might be, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to know. Number two. LEGO Adventure Time. Oh, come on, LEGO. Why not Adventure Time? <laughs> I'm a fan too, and the show still has a big enough following in 2020 to warrant a movie. And its bizarre themes and unique world feel like a really interesting fit for a LEGO set. As you might expect, it very easily got 10,000 supporters. In fact, LEGO themselves said they weren't able to keep up with the speed of supporters coming in. So what actually caused this decision? Well, my guess is because there was already technically a character-only set for Adventure Time. But we don't get any of the beautiful world or scenery, just a couple of character blocks. This idea proposed Finn and Jake's treehouse as a set and it looks gorgeous as a Lego set. But frankly, just about anything from the Land of Ooh would look artistic and beautiful as a Lego set. It's adventure time. Visual aesthetic is kind of its thing. Anyway, it's a real shame to see we only got some tiny model figures of the characters, rather than any actual sets from the vast, beautiful Adventure Time world. And for the number one rejected Lego set, Anatomini. Anatomini! <laughs> An upscale figure that splits in two to reveal his inside organs. This is a freaking awesome set, and it's educational too. When I happened upon this set, it was part of what inspired me to try this list. I was just fascinated by it. The author is Stephen Nix from the Netherlands. My name is Stefan Nix, and this is Anatomini. He's on LEGO IDs. And he's long since had the goal of offering this anatomical education tool to LEGO fans around the world. And our buddy Anatomini has gotten a lot of buzz. He's even been showcased in LEGO World. Nice! Even Brickset.com dedicated an article to discussing this beautiful set. I felt like there was nothing but good, earnest intentions behind this LEGO set. Kids in schools can build up his bones and organs brick by brick to better understand our own human bodies. Stomach, spine, liver, what is that? The gallbladder. Appendix. So I actually feel like kind of a jerk saying why I think this set was rejected. Why would Anatomini be rejected? Well, once again, there was no specific reason. But I think a very likely reason it was rejected is we're essentially looking at, well, an inside out human in Lego form. And sure, we get to teach kids about the gallbladder and transverse colon, but but Jeebus, look at this guy! Anatomini creates a sort of Lego uncanny valley, where I think I'm looking at something Lego, yet something feels very slightly off that is deeply disturbing my subconscious. Stefan's objective was to design a realistic but fun-looking skeleton. And, well, it definitely looks realistic. But last time the doctors did an MRI and echocardiogram on my innards, I can't say the images that came back were exactly fun. Amazing and horrifyingly fascinating, sure, but not exactly fun. Sure, I, like you, am an 86 billion neuron, one quadrillion synapse, unfathomable mass of mystery and intrigue, but honestly, I find myself a bit more attractive from the outside. I, I guess I'm just shallow like that. Or maybe Anatomini was rejected due to the sheer complexity of the build? At 2,128 bricks, Anatomini is a challenging and complex build. Maybe he was considered a little too complex for elementary schools? Though there are certainly plenty of young builders out there who would definitely prove me wrong on that. But what an idea. You can build all the basic human organs out of Lego bricks and then shove them into Anatomini. In fact, the newest model lets you remove all the organs and start plastic surgery. <laughs> ah. Now wait a minute, that was actually good. All oh, right, because I borrowed it from the author. Thanks, Stefan. Plastic surgery will never be the same. But anyway, while I personally would love to see Anatomini made, I can understand Lego thinking he might scare a few young children. And with that, I thank you for joining me on this tour through the creative, brilliant minds of the Lego community. Next to SpongeBob, Lego is becoming my new passion for topless. So if you have any other Lego videos you'd like to see personally, feel free to let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.